The recently concluded Durban International Film Festival featured a number of films, some of them so short, some of them not so short. Of course, one of the films that made headlines was of good report, which was banned and subsequently unbanned. We're not going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about Beria and, of course, interview the producer of Beria as well as the director. I'm talking about Vincent Muloy, as well as Leanne Heidenreich, Seleme, people from the Guta Institute who were very supportive as far as the Durban Film Festival is concerned. Well, the Goethe Institute had partnered with um, Stephen Markowitz, um, who was the executive producer of African Metropolis, and uh, Hubert Baal's fund and GT Bank, uh, which is a pan-African Nigerian bank, um, to do African Metropolis, of which Berea is one of the films. And African Metropolis is a package of six short films from six African cities and six filmmakers who made young, fresh, urban stories about their African cities. And we wanted to support this because um, there was a feeling that a lot of times African film is about stereotypes. So you have the you know, cliche of the exotic um, sunshine, sunset, African picture, uh, and then you have the hunger and catastrophe. And we were interested in doing something more interesting, something surprising uh, of this continent. So we're very happy to have Beria in the, in the series because it's a very interesting Joburg story. Hi. Ilsa sent me. She says she can't come. No, 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 wait, by seeing you. Ilsa. You know Ilsa every Friday. She sent me. What was Beria all about? We have a, a big fascination about human stories. Uh, and Beria is exactly that. It's a, it's a story of an old Jewish man who feels a bit disorientated with a transforming city and who his world is shaken by an unlikely relationship with a prostitute. Uh, if I tell you uh, the end, I'll, I'll spoil the film for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's basically the world that we're living in, that, that the world of the short film. Mm -hmm. Um, what was so fascinating about the project and many other projects in African Metropolis for us was the fact that it, it was breaking the boundaries of the usual stereotype uh, films from Africa that we, we are used to. But more importantly, it was that barrier of uh, Anglophone and uh, Francophone uh, uh, borders that, you know, uh, it was a good opportunity for us to have almost like a, a cultural uh, infusion, uh, breaking the borders of culture, uh, because we are a people, we are in one continent, we, however, have different takes, different perspectives based on our, on our background. Mm -hmm. uh, so some people see Africa as one, uh, but we know that uh, just like any other human beings, we may look the same, we might sound the same, but we have different takes on life. We have different perspective on many other things. We feel different based on what we want and what we desire. And, and African Metropolis was, was a great opportunity to us to explore those relationships, those issues that are going on, and also just put uh, another different human stories uh, on the platform of, 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 of television. What were the other five films five short films that uh, fell under African Metropolis? 
Apart from Berea, which was directed by Vincent, um, which is a, a, a story about Johannesburg, um, we have a fantasy film in Nairobi about a young man who is attracted to the girl who lives opposite. Um, then there's a filmmaker from Cairo who was interested in bringing different pictures from Cairo than what you see at the moment. Uh, there's lots of stories about political unrest, uh, but he was interested in showing uh, the lives of the youth who are actually in the street um, partaking in the revolution, but what is their daily life, what does their daily life look like. Um, the film from Abidjan is about Jean-Michel Basca, um, who, is a, uh, who was a famous painter from the U.S. and who traveled to um, Abidjan to repel his ghosts. Um, and um, yeah, it, it follows his story, his, um, his, uh, his, uh, his travels there. Um, then we have a story in Dakar of two women um, who are both uh, an older woman married uh, to a man for a very long time and uh, he's taking a second woman and how does their relationship of those two women, two women unfold. Um, and uh, the last story is in Lagos um, and uh, it's a bit of a thriller uh, set up. Um, you see a lineup of um, uh, young men um, who go to a place um, every night uh, to, uh, to show themselves naked to a woman. And you don't really know why, but they want a lot of money and the main uh, character in the film is trying to help his sister who's in hospital. So Vincent, one of the problems that filmmakers have is raising funds to make their films. Was it easy for you to raise the necessary funding? The question of money and, and making films, it's, it's probably a valid one and a very practical one. But beyond that, it's, it's the desire to tell stories, the desire to have a conversation. Uh, money will always be there, uh, will always be a problem of money. Uh, Wallywood still has a problem with money, despite the, the millions of rent that they have. But what is important for us was the opportunity to tell the story. And a lot of us appreciated the support that we got um, from, from the Goethe Institute, from Hubert Balls and, and the GT Bank. Uh, and because there's always got to be a beginning. And if, if you we see, uh, as Puopa Productions, we see this project as the beginning of, of identifying our voice, molding our voice, designing our voice, uh, and, and continuing in that line. Because I think we have a, a culture as a big part to play in transforming the continent, not just only in terms of uh, cultural transformation, uh, identity, but also economics of, of it as well. Uh, culture plays a big part in it, but the voices of the people plays a big part of it. To us, that's what was most exciting about this project. Fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Afro Showbiz News and that you'll join us again next week at the same time. Until then, this is Richard Mwamba saying, ta-ta!